Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So what I want to really want to focus on is that when you are down, you know, it's easy to give thanks when great things happen, but that's called gratitude. Praise is different. If I say thank you, you've done something for me, but it's a different kind of faith when I can praise you when, you've, when I can't see what you have done. It's another level. It's another level. It's another level. And I'm going to read into what, what I've got to you. So let's see. Let, let's see. Um, let's start from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Or let me read this one first. Psalm 67 verse 5. Psalm 67 verse 4. I will go a step further. There's a, there's a verse in the, new mes- in the message translation. I say, um, I know the code. I know the past code. Who knows that verse? I used it to preach, but I didn't quote it from this. I know the past code. But you look for it for me. Just type it. I know the password. I think like praise is the way. Something like that. It's in the message translation. So the Bible says this. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Verse 5. Verse 5 says, let's just get that one to go. Let the people praise thee. People praise thee. Verse 6, what will happen? Verse 6, then what? It says, then shall the earth yield our what? Increase, and even our God shall what? Did you notice that it was when they praised that the earth began to yield? So, before the praise, there was no yielding. Question, can you be so audacious to praise when you see nothing? He said, let the people praise thee, O God. So, he says, then shall the earth. The assumption in this verse is that at this point, the earth was not yielding. At this point, the business was not doing well. At this point, life wasn't going so great. At this point, there was really nothing to celebrate. But there's revelation. He says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee, O God. And after we praised him, he says, then shall the earth yield an increase. Oh, some of us are waiting for the earth to yield the increase before we praise him. You got the other wrong. We're going to praise him first, then the earth is going to yield the increase. So, even when we don't see the prophet, we're going to praise him. Praise God. Even when we don't see the finances, we're going to praise him. Because we know that if we praise him, then shall the earth yield a increase the problem is that you want the act to you the increase first without praising him you got the other wrong why you are still waiting for the funding praise him why you're still waiting for the marriage praise him why you're still waiting for the song praise him why you're still waiting for the baby praise him thank you for the cold way of response but you are my keyboarders praise the lord What does that look like practically? Practically, that means that I'm praying. I've gone through this period. Everything's so down. It's something to be negative. Maybe I've lost my job. Maybe things have gone bad. It's something to be negative about my loss of job, about betrayal. I go into Thanksgiving. Let me tell you something. And I want to tell you. Praising God, Thanksgiving, is a discipline. Is like exercise. If you wait till you feel like praising God, nothing significant will happen through your praise. What I've learned over time is that praising God and thanksgiving is most effective when I don't feel it. I, I, I mean, I'm telling you practical experience. So what happens is that you've gone through a very terrible betrayal. You've lost the job. You've gone through disappointment. And you, you, you step out, you step out, and when you stepped out, there's pain, there's pain in your heart. Because you just think about how much was lost, how much relationship was burnt, how you are disappointed. And in that state, let me tell you something, in that state, instead of you to open your mouth and say the wrong thing, you're going to a place of thanksgiving. The Bible says, as you stay there, it said, then the earth, why? Your thanksgiving will open a portal. For the supernatural to enter inside. He said, then the earth will you the increase. Glory to God. 
then the earth will yield its increase. Let's read it again. I, I, I wanted to, this is why we do what we do. So let, let's see what it again. It says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee, O God. Verse 6, verse 5 rather. Verse 6 now says, then the earth will yield our increase. And God, even our God shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. I want to notice something. He says, so for him to say the earth will yield this increase, that means before now there is no increase. Talk to me, somebody. Because if there was increase, what's, what's the big deal? He says, then the earth will yield the increase. What I mean is this. I'm praying for a funding for $200,000. I have not seen it. I wake up every day and I say, Father, I thank you. Because you have delivered what you said you would do. I give you praise and glory. You get into the board meeting with your partners. We say, Father, we lift up our voice in thanksgiving. You have never failed us. Exactly what you promised, we have received it. You give him praise. You come to church and you dance and you sing. You offer your thanksgiving offering. And they wonder, are you crazy? The reason why is that you have thought yourself to respond to delay with thanksgiving. Did you hear what I said? You have thought yourself not to respond to delay with complaining. Not to respond to delay with, you know, with all the other things. To respond to delay with things. It's a discipline. And the Bible says this. And, the, you know, the Bible says this. And that's why it says that. We will enter its courts and gates with praise and thanksgiving. Let me show you a practical example. Second Corinthians chapter 20. Verse 21. So some of you are here. There are obvious things to thank God for this year. I thank God for you. Some of you are here. You have to look very closely to thank God for this year. I thank God for you. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1. Boom, boom. The car will be very nice tonight. I'm just looking at the set again. I think they're really pretty. So second chapter 20, verse 21. Verse 21, not verse, that'll be too long. Verse 21. Let's read together. Can we read together? Come on, can we read together? Yeah. One to go. And when they had consulted the people, he appointed singers to the Lord that shall praise the beauty, that shall praise what? The beauty of holiness and has went out before the army to say, praise the Lord for his mercies endure it. Let me give you the background. The background was that they were going to fight a war they knew they would lose. Because the army they were fighting was stronger than them. In fact, the man told them, he said, if Jehoshaphat said he would save you, he said it's a lie. Even Jehoshaphat knew it was a lie. The Bible says, as Jehoshaphat was praying, God said that, stop praying. Stop praising me. So what Jehoshaphat did was this. He took the choir. Just imagine now, we are going to fight against Iraq. And we organized the mass choir of Nigeria and we put them in front. First of all, I don't know that the choir had enough faith to stay in front. Because when you think of those you are going to fight and the Nazi should stay in front. The Bible says the choir stayed in front. The army was behind. See what the Bible says. For he had consulted the people and he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army, what does that mean? Listen to what it means. They went out before the army. The army is the natural thing. The singing is the supernatural thing. What am I saying? Before you submit the document, do the spiritual. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Before you go for the interview, do the spiritual. You already know you are not qualified. There's no way they can listen to you. You now appoint yourself singers unto the Lord that they should praise him in the beauty of the holiness. Before the night, you just start in Maka, Pali, Kumaya. Lord, you are wonderful. Lord, you are magnificent. Lord, you are holy. You are incredible. There's no one like you. And they are wondering, the reason why is that our trust is not in the document. Our trust is not in the connection. Our trust is in the living God. The problem is this. Don't go to battle without starting with praise. Don't go to battle without starting with praise. He said, and they began to say, praise the Lord for his mercies enduring forever. Verse 22. The Bible says, says, and they began to sing and to praise God. Listen to this. When they said singing and praising God, nothing had changed. 
But as they began to sing and praise God, there was now rearrangement. The Bible says the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and the Mount Sinai, which were come together against Judah, and they were smitten. How did that happen? Look at the next verse. The Bible says this. All of a sudden, they put a partner together. The children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mansai. This is what praise does. Praise confuses the camp of the enemy. Praise confuses the camp of the enemy. He says, the people that partnered began to fight. He said, there were three of them. Two of them came together to kill one. Bible says, as soon as they killed the one, they now came together to kill each other. He said, for the children of Ammon and the Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Moab, of Moab say, uttered to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped each other to destroy another. The reason was simple. They said, we praise. Let me say something to you. What should make you cry turn into thanksgiving? And that's why I say thanksgiving is a discipline because, watch this, the critical period in your life where you should be thankful are the seasons where naturally there will be nothing to thank God for. Next verse. Next verse 24. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked upon the multitude and behold, they were dead bodies to the earth and none had escaped. Verse 25. Verse 25. And when Jehoshaphat and Israel came to take away the spoil, they found amongst them in abundance both riches with a dead body, precious jewels, which were stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry. And there were three days, there were three days in gathering of the spoil because it was so much. Are you going to war? Before you do anything, start with Thanksgiving. So why don't people thank God? Number one, because of a self-made mentality. Self-made mentality. People have self-made mentality. You'll be like, have you not seen someone say, ah? You'll be like, ah, my God, you are engaged. Why would I not be engaged? See, girl. Ah, can someone see this and not say you'll be engaged? Ah. He said, ah, in domain. I'm hot everywhere. Let me tell you something. There are people that are hotter than you that are not married. Yes, All you have to do is to put on the television. Are you here? The second thing is this. Have you not seen people? Have you not noticed that the race is not to the swift? The battle is not to the strong. I used to think when I was in school, university, in my mind, I used to pick, ah, this guy will be very rich, this guy will be very rich. You know what I noticed? All the guys I thought would be very rich, they are not, they are just average. Then the boys I thought were very useless, or they were just average boys, they turned out to be very successful. See, you must be careful lest you have a self-made mentality and you think you're responsible for what happened in your hand. Listen to me. No matter what you did, the hand of God was in it. Why are we grateful? For that hand of God in it, Lord, I'm grateful. Why? The race is not the swift. I want to ask you, some of you, the reason why you, some of you here, the reason why you're not grateful is that you feel as if you came from a background what you were left with wealth. Excuse me. So that's why you're not grateful. So we're like, what are you grateful for? Nothing. I mean, born in the US, living in Koyi, you, you know, you didn't have to get a job working that complaint, made millions, starting your complaint. You're, they're going to set you up. They gave you a hundred million dollars. You started on a high plane. My brother, did you choose your, did you choose your parents? Oh, so you think if we could choose parents, we would choose our own parents? Oh my God. Can, can we be honest here? How many of you would choose your parents? If you could choose your parents, raise up your hand. Some of you will, oh, but raise up your hand. See, they're in the minority. I'm not saying you will not. Some of us are, eh? ah, when they are powerful son names. Because, but you that you are born into a rich family, you, you think to forget that it was grace that put you there. And people that were born in Ajegule, you tend to forget that it was also grace that put you there. Glory to God. What about if you were born? You know that you know you'd be glad. It can get worse. What about those that were born in Sudan during the time of war? I hope you realize that they could not go to school. Because how will you go to school when the country is in, is in war? 
or those that were born in Rwanda during the genocide. You should be grateful that oh wow, but it's, so you see them today and say, ah, are they not smart? Why can't they go to school? But you forgot that when you were going to school, their country was torn in pieces with war. And you have the education now. Like I worked out in school. Who made it convenient for your country to be in peace? Because we can forget. We can forget so easily. And some of you, you need to realize. Some of you say, hey, but you know, how can I praise God? But I have this problem. Can I be honest with you? Every problem you have is a function of an answered prayer. Every problem you have is what? A function of an answered prayer. Is it not because you are married, you are thinking that you don't have a child? If you were not married, would, it's because your prayer that your, your marriage was answered. That's why a child is a problem. You are praying for promotion. Is it not because God gave you a job? You are praying for a house. Is it not because you have grown and expanded in a bigger house? So sometimes you don't realize this, which is very significant. That sometimes what you are praying for right now is because of previous prayer is answered. Some of them say, I look at school fees. It's not because God gave you children. Some say, this wedding is expensive. It's not because you have someone to marry. Some people are looking for someone to marry. Human beings, was God answered our prayer? Then the next is what? Another prayer point. And you slow, just slow down and remember that what Oh wow, can I tell you this? Just remember that you are actually living in an answered prayer. That's the truth. A lot of us, not a lot of us, all of us here are living in answered prayers. Many years ago, this was what you prayed for. This was what you fasted for. This was what you believed for. How come you have forgotten so soon? That wow, I'm actually living in a, the car you are driving is an answer prayer. There was a time you were believing for that car. You said, if I could just, if I could just have this kind of car, the marriage you are in right now is an answer prayer. Even the clothes you are wearing, the shoes you are wearing, because this was not how you were before. This is an answer prayer. Now you just go and buy something and just wear like this. Hey, you forgot there was a time you were saying, Lord, if I can just get two suits, you know, this. Now, those things are no longer prayers because the Lord has answered them. But human beings, we forget that the reason for this new prayer point is because an old prayer point has been answered. Someone say, Lord, I'm thankful. Oh, you didn't say they were. Say, Lord, I'm thankful. Say, Lord, I'm thankful. Someone say, Ha! The whole Saturday I spent mechanic. Is it not because you have car? People that don't have car, they go to mechanic. Why you didn't have car? You didn't know mechanic. You didn't mechanic workshop. You not even know there was organizer somewhere. It was when you had the car. You not began to recognize that. Ah, there's organizer somewhere. There's this. There's that. You will begin to realize. Because the truth is this this is a big truth where you are today is an answered prayer you just need to think back let me tell you something if you write your prayers anywhere go back and check what you wrote 10 years ago i'd be surprised that wow in fact a, a lady sent me a letter he said pastor thank you for a little recognition and I, I he said the reason why is that i'm looking back this year no no she, it was she wrote it last year he said, i'm looking back and i look at my letter and everything i wrote he said it took I was shocked to remember that almost every night wrote is done. He said, Pastor, I'm thanking you. Thank you so much. Because if I didn't have this data, I will not even remember the faithfulness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. So why don't people praise God? Because of the self the, the self-made mentality. And that's why, can I tell you this? When God wants to really help you, God wants to do a miracle in your life in such a way you cannot attach your name to it. That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, you know, he says, it will call a ravenous bird from the east. You know what a ravenous bird is? You know, I wonder what, why didn't he just say, let, let's read that verse. I, I want to show you something quickly. You know, because some of you are going to understand why people disappoint you a lot now. Oh, Wow.
Isaiah chapter 48 verse 11. Verse, let's see from verse 10. From verse 10. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. He said behold. 46 verse 10. Sorry. 46 verse 10. Not 40, 48. 46 verse 10. Oh, someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. It says, I'm the Lord that declares the end from the beginning and ancient times the things that are not done my cancel god says what i have in mind will stand that's why i'm not concerned about what the doctor says i'm not concerned about the economic prediction for next year because god's cancel in respect of, oh my god god's cancel in respect of all those things is going to stand do you believe that do you accept that say with me say my future is settled the reason why he said my counsel shall stand he says and i will do my pleasure verse 11 to say something very powerful he says how will i do it i will call a ravenous bed from the east now that's the confusion why does god specify and say oh why did he say ravenous why did he just say a bird so i had to go and study about what the raven the raven is the most selfish bed you know why the raven might be the only bed that does not fit his own child other beds will if you've seen the end before as the end is going the children will follow him and look for pasture the same thing the eagle all of them will help like that you know but do you know what the raven does the raven is so soft he doesn't fit his own own child god says i will use the most selfish person to bless you the reason why is that so that you yourself you would not be able to say i had hand in it if your brother your sister your mother helped you you say that ah she is my blood so when someone that hates you helps you you will look up to heaven and say god you did this for me you know what sometimes that's why god gets in the way and that's why some people close to you disappoint you some people close to you turn their back on you the reason why is that man needs to get out of the way so that god can do his work look at him and say man get out of my way let god do his work yeah man needs to get out of the way that's why that uncle that promised you money for some reason you just find him postponing canceling postponing that's why that person that said they will help you with the connection or promotion they'll find it postponing connection and the reason why is that god is hoping that you can look up to him you know why he wants to do that because if those things happen you will owe your gratitude to them you will say ah uncle if not for you god says i don't want something like that say if not for me jehovah he shall die but what so I can be if not so you can tell like Psalm 124 if not if the Lord had not been on our side see it says calling a ravenous bed from the east then it says something a man that executed my counsel from what do you ask why I say far country he said if I will not use those around you I will go and import them ah a man from the far country who thank you Jesus if nobody will marry you in the office God will import somebody else praise God if nobody will fund you God will send from for China why he says so that by the time you get it you can be like ah this is outside my calculation i thought it was this i thought it was that i calculated but god does more than calculation he says the man that executed my counsel from what a far country wow why does he do that and i'll tell you why he does that so that you can never say you had hand in it the problem is that many of you are too attached to certain people for help. God said, they that put their trust in chariots, it's a chariot to fail. Put your trust in God. Why? And why God does it is that God wants to use it to brag. He wants you to use it to brag. He wants to give you a God advertising testimony. What do we start from? Let the people praise to your God. But the attitude is this i will enter his gates with thanksgiving i will enter his courts with praise 
even when I don't feel like, Lord, let's watch this now. It's more difficult to praise him when you can't see it. But that's where the discipline comes in. Lord, I thank you. And lastly, what thanks even does, what praise does to you is this. Praise helps God become bigger in your sight. And once God becomes bigger, your problem begins to shrink. And I believe that that's why God told you to put the choir ahead. Just imagine, as they put the choir ahead, they were just chanting that our God is the, is, has never lost a battle. Is this, is that, is this, is that. Their faith was going stronger. Because every time you praise God, God increases in your life. Mm. Do you feel right now as if you're overwhelmed, things are too much? Praise God. When God increases in your heart, everything will shrink. This is the way the songwriter says it. It says this, I have made you too small in my eyes, oh God. Can you put the words on the song for me? What does it say? I've made it too small in my eyes, oh God. Oh Lord, forgive me. Because some of you, all you are looking for is one million. The way you are praying, I see if God doesn't have it. He says, I believed in the lie that you are not able to help me. He said, but now I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my eyes and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. That's the thing. See, you've allowed your problem, your business problem, your financial to overwhelm you. Calm down. Lord, be magnified. Then say it again. He said, what? Continue, sir. He said, be magnified, oh Lord. You are highly exalted. Continue. And there's nothing you cannot do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. He says, be magnified, oh Lord. Be Magnify. Can you sing the song for us? Sing, sing along, sing along. We'll end that last week. Everybody sing along. Everybody sing along, yeah? Everybody sing along. If your partner is singing much, then... Sing, 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 sing. Don't keep quiet, don't look, sing along. This is why you lift up your two hands and let's worship. Lift up your two hands, try, try. Lift up your two hands and let's worship him. Oh yes, Lord. Let's sing it together. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord Jesus.
Go ahead and thank him for this year. Go ahead and thank him. 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 Thank him for specific things. Thank him for life and good health. Thank him for job. Thank him for progress. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Even things are not working, thank him because it's in control. Thank him because it's in control. Thank him because it's in control. Thank him for what you can see. Thank him for what you can see. Thank him for blessings that are still coming on the way. Thank him because of a bright future. Amen. Praise God. Chima, come. Let me show you what Thanksgiving is. Imagine I take my mom to the hospital and he's a doctor. And he gives me, I say, I say and he said, Doctor Halfa, and he gives me a report that's not so good. He said, But we're trying now. He said, Thank you so much, doctor. You know why I say thank you? Even though my mom has not recovered, I trust him. And I trust the fact that he's trying his best. You know what I'm saying? So, some of you, your business, like the mother in the hospital, it has not recovered. It's not come out. Things have not gotten better. But you're saying thank you because you trust the doctor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, thank you. We trust you. Sometimes we can't see it. We can't explain. But we trust you. Thank you for life. Thank you for provision. Thank you for good health. Thank you for family. Thank you for friends. Thank you for skill. Thank you for the progress we've made. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you for mercy that never fails. We are extremely grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. You can have your seats.